Yo, what is going on guys? It is your boy Seso here, Bring us a video here today, bring you guys a text effect tutorial. Now, this text effect tutorial has been, it's been a little weird for me, because I couldn't even find the perfect, you know how I usually find, I feel like I find myself with these text effects and just find like a really cool, perfect finalization of it, but I just couldn't find it. I did like different colors, I did different backings of what it looks best on, like black or white, it looks pretty good on white, it looks freaking amazing on black as well, but I had so many revisions, I'm just gonna go with this. Now, I feel like this is the probably the most complete and that's gonna actually do the tutorial on but even though I'm going to tour, doing the tutorial excuse me on this itself you can also do the same thing I'm doing right now I highlighted some of the things in red that way if you want to take it off you can so this is other revisions that I had one was taking off the stroke and leaving it like this which to me looks pretty freaking awesome as well um just don't mind the G for now I guess I guess let's look at like oh, well, right here don't have to mind the G for now but I think it looks really cool like this as well as well as also taking off the indention sort of uh indention effect with just sort of like the text sort of filling it out itself um this looks pretty cool as well like there's a lot that i feel like i can do with this text effect but i'm just not even i'm not there yet but hopefully sharing it and hopefully getting your guys' opinions and also getting i guess a lot more uh i guess people who do the effect themselves and do it their own way and then show me is gonna help me out try to fill out this concept so hopefully guys do enjoy uh, today's video so of course two likes on the video equals a secret down below as always guys you don't forget to leave a like on the video if you guys do enjoy it'll mostly be the psd of this video here today and then you can see and kind of scroll around all the different things that i've kind of did to sort of like you know i guess if you want to look at it in your own aspect and learn yourself by just looking at the actual documents itself so with that being said let's go ahead and get this thing going okay i think i'm ready let's do this thing okay okay this looks good all right, guys, so let's go ahead and get this thing going. So the first thing we're going to, of course, do is hide this text effect that we did already. And we're going to throw in the font that we used today's video. And it's going to be called, oh, uh, let's put this in the middle. Uh, it is in the middle. Oh, that looks weird. Okay, we're just going to put it like a little further down. Just because my ODD, ODD, OCD, there we go. Okay, it's messing up. All right, so anyway, the, the font that we use in today's video here today is called Gothic Narrow. Or Gotham Narrow, sorry, excuse me. Gotham Narrow. It is actually a $5 family font. I bought it because it's actually the original font I believe G Fuel uses for their labels. So if you guys recognize it, that's probably the reason why. And also, it kind of makes sense for me to use that font with the word G Fuel in there because it kind of makes it flow a little better. But I guess in a way as well, do not forget to use like a sort of rounded, liquefied a text effect i guess or text font excuse me for the text effect that way it might look a little bit better i'm not even entirely sure what it looks like with that sort of text or font but for what it looks like right now for what it is it looks pretty good so i'm gonna go ahead and just use this font once again so with that being said i'm also gonna make the background black for this and the reason i'm gonna be doing that is because i'm gonna just sort of this is how i start off how i do oh, excuse me I, this is how I started off doing it is because I saw the colors a lot more better on a black background than a white background and I just changed it to a white background afterwards so I'm just gonna put it on a black background for now that way we can sort of see the colors as well again and also I already added the layer style on here because I want to get the same exact one so I basically copied and pasted the layer style that I had in the original and I'm gonna just go through it really quickly for you guys as well so the first thing of course that I did was no matter what the text font color is just make sure you select the background color that you're using and the background color that I'm using here today the black that I'm using is the hex code 131 four one six it's kind of like a bluish black i just lowered it down just a little bit my font color just like so just lowered it down a little bit more and if you guys want to know that it's one zero one 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 three press okay and i simply added these layer styles to them they go off by putting my stroke in first i had a one size stroke with a blend mode on overlay over opacity on 15 percent and the color was white and we put an inner shadow in which is probably the most important thing to do is you put your blend mode on multiply opacity on 55 percent and then your uh, distance at two, your choke at zero, and your size at one. And what that does right here is sort of do the entire sort of indention concept, which I feel like it looks really, really good. If you didn't want to put a, like I put a stroke around it like I had in the original uh, like pre uh, preview, I guess you can say, right? So I also added an inner glow in here on overlay, oh, 5% opacity, stroke size 16, and then your size at, is at 10. And then simply I added a satin here because I didn't want to put a gradient overlay because this looks like it would look a, look a gradient overlay on it. It doesn't look entirely correct. So I went with a satin, which kind of does the same exact thing in a way, but sort of disperses it a little bit differently. And I love how this looked. So I did put a satin on it, five opacity on multiply, distance at 25, and my size at 50. And then I went ahead and put in an outer glow, which is not completely necessary, but I did put it in there because why the heck not? Opacity at 7%, a blend mode on overlay, spread at zero, and your size at five and that is the layer style so what comes now after this is basically the whole sort of uh uh the whole color stuff right so the color i'm using for today's video that which i actually did start off with was this color here which is df36 f or i keep saying f no that's an f okay df3646 is a little sort of reddish tone that i use for today's video and 
with that being said, I think we're good to go. So the first thing we're gonna have to do is start off with this really cool little sort of liquefied text, uh, excuse me, liquefied fill in part of this thing, right? So I did use the pen tool for this and I would advise you to do it again. I wouldn't really advise you to, like, at first I just did like a, like a little box and I used a liquefy to sort of like liquefy it to make it look a little more liquidy. But I think that was a lazy way out. I think pen tooling it out is probably your best bet. And I also think this is the most time we should spend on this. I had so many times I just had to redo it and redo it, redo it to make it look best. So I'm gonna just kind of do it right now for you guys. I'm gonna make a new layer. We're gonna press P on our keyboard for the pen tool. And we're gonna start off in the middle of this, right? Something like this. Uh, let me see, where did I go on? I went down here. Let's just go ahead and go down again, right? Let's make sure this is nice and flow. Like it kind of flows right. And we're gonna go up here next. And I believe for this one, I added this okay so i went for in the middle so what i kind of did was i went from the middle i wanted my you to have more of a uh i guess a higher look to it or it, it might look like a j in a case but <clears throat> i wanted to have my you to be just a little bit more liquid inside of it for some odd reason who knows i guess in a way if you're thinking about it i guess inch uh, each individual uh i guess letter is filled in with liquid but for the for the you for some reason even though that doesn't make any sense it it looks cool right i know it doesn't make any complete sense but i guess to make the effect better um maybe you want to make it make complete sense who knows i mean that's kind of like a whole whole thing about it as well right so we're gonna also kind of i'm gonna kind of replicate what i did here because why the heck not right okay boom something like that let's bring it down here i believe i went somewhere in the middle correct and then i sort of did something like this so i went somewhere like this something like that right and then i went down here and i believe i just sort of filled in this with like that something like how right okay i went up a little bit all right let's say that as our pen tool we're gonna go all the way around make sure we go around the f and then connect it over here so once i do this i'm gonna fill this in with that code that i just named off before that's a different color let's choose this one here press ok press ok again it's like a nice little red tone right so i'm gonna do is i'm gonna select the thumbnail of the word g fuel text so i'm gonna press Control, hold click on the t just, just like so right Press M on my keyboard, which brings me the marquee tool, which gives me the option when I right click to layer via cut. And that's what I want to go ahead and do. So I'm going to cut this out right here. This is what, this is the one we want. We're going to call this one. This is the one that we want. That's what's, on the, that's what's on the inside of this. And that's kind of what we want, right? So we're going to delete the other thing that happens when we cut it out. And we're going to go ahead and start putting in our little, I guess, our layer styles into this. So <clears throat> for this, we're going to be throwing in just a simple inner glow, I believe, with about, I guess, mm, seven or eight nine opacity choke size at 16 and size at 10 and we're going to keep it sort of the original how the original layer style was on the background here we just want this to pop out just a little bit not too much does have to be crazy um and i would say maybe even add in a bit of a gradient overlay in here maybe like 15 12 let's go for like 11 percent just to get a little bit two different uh, tones of color there right and then i'd say you can probably put in an air shadow i believe i did in my original concept but i'm not entirely sure if it works right now because it didn't really make too much sense near the end so i'm gonna go ahead and say maybe throw in a little simple inner shadow at a size one and opacity 50 percent on multiply and that's gonna be our simple little liquid just like sort of fill in part here because next is just basically gonna be coming in it's just gonna be sort of a lot of a ga filter galleries because why the heck not it's a whole whole point of the abstract right so first i'm gonna do is press Control j on this layer one so what i'm gonna do is have a layer one copy we're gonna go into filter filter gallery and we're gonna throw in, I believe it's the first one's called Sponge, right? Uh, where is it? We're gonna open all of them really quick. I believe it's called Sponge something. Sponge filter. Where are you? I know you're here. Let's just look for it actually. And it's like this one right here. So that's the sponge filter right here. This one right here under artistic. Um, what we're gonna say here is we're gonna look for the most amount of like little dots here. You see this little like sort of if I just put this up more, this I guess I get a lot more here, which looks pretty good as well. But we want to have like just in between, like right here. If you have your definition on low, put your brush size on 10, put your smoothness on 15 automatically, and mess around with just the definition only because you want to get just a little bit of like little swirlies. I feel like these look like to me are like sort of reflections in water. If you were looking at water, if it was just like moving around, I don't know. I feel like that's the whole point of like why I went for this. Um, even if I put my definition all the way up, I think this works best in my opinion. So I'm going to go ahead and say lower it down one. Let's see what happens. All right. So lowering it down by one does make a difference. So I'm going to put on 24 definition for me. I know it's going to be different for you guys. So please be sure to get kind of just get the rough amount that kind of I haven't like that you're seeing right now. Right. So the media thing I'm going to do is rasterize this layer style. That way I can use W on our keyboard, which is the magic wand tool. Make sure you select the magic wand tool and not the quick selection tool. Because what's going to happen here is also make sure your tolerance up here is at like 10. Because if it's at 30, 
if you see if I try to click on this all right I got lucky but so you see like when I try to click on this one right here everything on the outside also got selected and I don't want that that's because my tolerance is too high because the colors are too similar so I'm gonna go ahead and lower this down to about 10 and I believe when I select here again you're gonna see that it actually just select what I'm selecting and that's kind of what I want so I'm just like all this stuff here I'm not gonna select that because I feel like that's too close to the edge here um not even the same thing for that one and then I'll do it for this one just because all right so once you've selected this right click on this and then layer via cut once again and we're our only thing we're going to keep is just this right here so we're going to have like this little oops this little pattern stuff now that's perfect that's what we want to have and right when we do this we're going to add in a very simple just two different things like an inner shadow for inner shadow first excuse me like just a little bit of inner shadow i'd say five size 50 opacity you can lower the opacity down you can mess around with it just a little bit maybe even adding a stroke in here yeah, we'll say like five percent just because I'm not entirely sure if I want to put it in there or not. Oh, you really can't see that 5% either. Anyway, all right, so I'm going to put a satin in as well, and then I'm just going to press OK, right? Just very, very simple. It's a very distinct two different tones of color now, and we have a little bit of a texture going inside of our whole little, quote, liquid thing, right? So after this, we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to add in another thing called graphic pen. So the things I'm going to go ahead and duplicate are both the first layer, and I'm going to call this layer two. Why not? And if you want to, you can group them together, but I'm not going to for right now. We're going to press Control J to duplicate both of these layers and then Control E to then merge them all together. We're going to go into Filter. We're going to go into Filter Gallery. We're going to go into, I believe it's Store, Distort, excuse me. No, it's in Sketch. It's called Graphic Pen. The reason why I use this one because it just kind of looked cool. I like the texture that it came out with. But for this one, I'm getting, I'm actually starting to see I have a lot more stroke things going around here. If you guys saw my original concept here, I had a lot less of these like little line strokes here. But I did use this effect, so I'm gonna go ahead and say I'm gonna make try to mess around with it a little bit more and see if I get like a uh, a different look because these are the same exact things I used before. So if I mess around, with, okay, moving my light and dark balance up helped. My stroke length also does help. I'm gonna put it around 10, I think, and I think that's pretty good. It looks pretty good. I'm gonna press OK. So this is what I had before, right? So at this very moment in time, I went ahead and throwed my bright, excuse me, my blend mode from normal to lighter color. And the reason why I did this is simply because I think it just looks a little bit better if I were to add on lighter color. That way, when I do my next thing, which is going to be adding a little bit of light effects to this, it's going to work out quite a little better than I expected, right? So I'm going to go ahead and group all these two things together. Three things, excuse me. So the three different layers that I just did for the whole filter gallery stuff, I'm going to group them together. We're going to call this filters in here for now and on top of this i'm going to make a new layer and i'm going to clip mask this layer onto that layer and i'm going to go ahead and just select a nice little green here which by simply holding alt having your soft brush up already and then if you hover over you get different colors that you already have on your canvas so i'm going to select this green here and we're going to select i select the purple oop the pink okay the green i want the green all right so i'm going to select the green click a couple times around select the purple or the pink whatever the heck color this is select a couple times around just a little bit right i'm gonna throw this on linear dodge add lower my opacity down just a little bit and i'll maybe a little more and maybe even lower my lightness down by pressing Control u on my keyboard just a little bit right okay there's that so now i have this i'm gonna go ahead and just add in a brightness and contrast now as well i'm gonna also make sure i have this clipping mask onto this little filter here as well and we're just gonna sort of make sure we pop up this call a little bit more and i'll say hmm that looks pretty okay all right so I'm going to call this light, right? So, right. so the next thing I'm going to go ahead and do is copy everything again, and we're going to put in another texture on this. So I'm going to copy everything, including the brightness and contrast. If you want, you can group it again. I'll put filter group two, press control J, control E. So control J is going to duplicate it. Control E is going to merge it together. And you're going to have this layer here to also mess around with again with the filters. So filter, filter gallery. And the way I went through picking my filters and stuff like that, I just wanted to sort of feel like levels, right? So the next one I'm gonna be using is called Patchwork. I had my square size at zero and my relief both at zero, and it gave me this really cool pixelated effect. So if I press okay, I'm gonna go ahead into uh, my eraser here. I'm gonna erase just a little bit. So just so I have like my first layer, my first little layer being a little bit like pixelated in a way. And if you don't wanna use the eraser, by the way, I'm gonna backspace really quickly, Control Alt Z. I'm gonna use the filter, uh, excuse me, the, the masking tool or the layer mask, excuse me. So if I use a black brush right now, you see my, my brush is black. As soon as you click on this layer here, you see over here, as soon as you click on this, they're going to change the color. So if you want to use a black brush to erase, that's what you can do. And if you want to ever put it back in, all you have to do is switch it to a white and you see it fills it back in, right? Black brush. And I'm going to go ahead and just make sure my first layer here 
it's sort of pixelated so i wanted to try to build layers so this is the whole point right now is trying to be building layers into this little effect here right so once i've done this i'm gonna go ahead and merge it again so everything besides the text once again just like so and the next thing i'm gonna be using is the mosaic tiles i think it's called so if i go into here i believe it's called mosaic tiles and the reason why i use this as you can see it sort of gives my uh like construction or excuse me the the whole composition sort of like a really cool almost inner shadow as well which looks pretty okay for this little effect that i have here let's zoom out again i think it's pretty okay let's maybe move around a little bit for the oh we want to keep that all the way up tile size let's just say like 62 for this one okay i'm gonna press okay and i think it looks pretty okay for what it is right now let's go ahead and oops i don't want to erase too much but i want to erase a little bit just so we can get these little bit of like just a little bit of these increases or indentions, excuse me, looks pretty freaking cool to me. I'm not entirely sure why we're gonna call this one and we'll call this two again, because it's our second group of filters. And I believe I only have one more or two filters left. So I'm gonna, again, group everything again, right? Control J, Control E, that way I have all this now. And we're gonna throw this into the filter gallery. And I believe I use artistic dry brush. For me, this looks pretty cool in my opinion. You can mess around with the texture a little bit more maybe. Uh, I would say not, put it on one. What's up with the brush detail? I think the brush detail is pretty okay. If I put it on maybe eight or so, and then maybe even five on the brush size and press okay. So what this is gonna do for me is put in just another, another like another layer, right? So I'm gonna put in here, we're gonna call this three, by the way. Click on this, black brush, oops, three. And then click on this, use the B on my keyboard, black brush, and then erase again. And I wanna erase just a little bit less than I did before. That way I have this really cool layer now. I have like a nice little layer feel to it. It looks really good right now and I'm very happy how this came out with. So I'm gonna do one more group of layers. And now you can do this a different way if you wish to. I would say you can use other textures. You can use whatever the heck you guys want. I use these specific textures by just kind of like going through a lot and just seeing what the heck happens, right? So I went ahead and just used the last thing was paint, dubis or dubis, whatever. Shout out to Aaron, because it's just gonna make my textures just look a little more sharp, right? You see that how it looks just a more sharp and look clean and looks really good at this very moment in time. And that is pretty much the whole liquefied part of this actual tutorial. So we're not doing anything more or less, or excuse me, I guess we're not doing anything to this text effect anymore for this little liquidy stuff in the inside, because that is pretty much it for that aspect. The next thing we're going to be doing is doing a really simple little, I guess, liquefied drips. So we're going to copy this one more time, control J, control E, all the effects that you just did. So we're going to have this little thing right here. We're going to go into filter. We're gonna go into, I believe it's, what which one is it? Stylize? I believe it's stylize. Eh, which one is it? Video, other, okay, pixelate. Oh God, distort, it's in distort. Okay, so it's in distort, it's called wave, right? So for this, it's gonna be a little difficult for you to see. I'm gonna just kind of see what happens if I just press okay really quick. Okay, so it's kind of like the same thing I had before. So I'm gonna, if I go back, I'm gonna give you guys the exact same sort of things I have right now for my, uh, boop, for my uh, settings here. So I had number generates uh, five. Wavelength 10, 17 max, one amplitude, 33 max, and 100 scale, 100% 100, uh, vertical. Pressed OK, and I have this here. I'm gonna throw this right here. I'm gonna call this wave. I'm gonna uh, wave with a V, not a B. And we're gonna throw this behind the G Fuel text. We're gonna find a good spot for where the look, kind of looks like nice and liquefy right here. It looks pretty good right there. We can delete this one, delete this one. Maybe just keep these two maybe. And then for some reason, this doesn't look incredibly great, but we're gonna say whatever for it. And we're just gonna keep going for it. If you wanted to do a, a different, I guess, render of it, I would definitely say that's probably your best uh, bet. Use a 100% harness brush to erase the rest of this. So I'm gonna go ahead and say erase this here. We're gonna erase uh, this. We'll erase this stuff on the inside because I only went on the bottom, all right? Okay, we're gonna erase this one because it looks weird. We're gonna erase all that. That too. We're gonna erase this one. We're gonna erase that one. And we're gonna erase that one. Uh, we can cut this one out. We're gonna layer via copy. That way I can then just delete this one with my brush again. Take this one, move it up a little bit. And I'll just have to really, really quickly re erase this, right? I wanted to make sure I didn't have that weird looking thing there. I don't need any of this stuff on this one. Just that right there. Actually, that looks pretty cool too right there. All right, cool. So once I have this, I kind of have this really cool little liquify sort of effect here. This is now, I'm, I just started seeing this. I'm going to delete this one too. Can't really see the F. And we're going to also cut this one out, I think. Copy. So we'll take our brush, right? Black brush. Get rid of it. On the copied version, move it up. Oops, I erased it on my copy version. 
Okay, so it's on there. Select it, cut it out. There we go. And move it up just a little bit. Get the nice little liquify in there. Take my eraser and get rid of that right there. Perfect. Now we have this little cool little liquefied sort of thing on the bottom. It looks pretty cool. I think it looks pretty cool. And I think we're just going to keep it like so. And I'm just going to go ahead and group all this together and just call this wave. Oops. I didn't mean to click on that like that. Group it all together and just call it liquid wave. Right? So once you've done this, you're also on the road to basically finishing. I believe the next thing we got to do is sort of like the little... Uh, I guess the stroke around it if you guys want to say and also you can probably put the back uh, white background in here as well You can also get rid of this if you want to so this is what it looks like currently So if you have these little other things here, which I actually have to I happen to find quite a lot If you need to just go through all your layers really quickly Excuse me. I think it's this one right here Okay, so I'm gonna take my brush and then erase it with black and we'll get rid of that very very simply So it just doesn't look really weird So if you wanted to use it like this like I said before in the beginning of the tutorial If you want to use it like this, that's your option there But I'm gonna also really quickly just show you guys how I did it with the little stroke, right? Very, very simple things I did here. All I ended up doing was, we're going to duplicate this little G Fuel text here. We're going to lower our fill all the way down to zero. You guys already know how this works, right? If you lower your fill all the way down to zero, this is how you get the indention part of it. So if you put the uh, the original sort of copy that I did from the, remember in the beginning, I was like, hey, put this layer style on here. And you guys were like, why the heck you did that? Well, this is why I did it. If you lower your fill all the way down to zero, this is what it looks like right here when you sort of have it on a white background. This is the second revision that I had, and that's where I want to save right there. I'm going to stop right there and say, like, that's what it looks like. You can go ahead and go from there. But what I ended up doing was, I'm going to delete all this stuff here. I'm going to copy this before I do that. Delete all this rest of the stuff here. We're just going to only have a stroke on this. And for this stroke, I'm going to make it black. And we're also going to make it, oops, I didn't mean to move it like that. We're going to make it uh, black, put the opacity up here, and then put this up as well. Uh, I'm not put it on overlay, put it on normal. I believe right about here looks pretty good. Okay, I'm going to press OK. Now, I'm going to really quickly delete this G because we're not going to be using that too much. We're only even using fuel as an F-U-E-L, right? Somewhere about there. So, this is what I saw myself, right? So, I'm going to say put this below the liquid stuff because it looks really cool when you have sort of black outline and look the liquid little on the bottom, the wave little liquid stuff looks like it's coming off the stroke itself, which looks to me pretty cool as well. So, what I ended up doing was making it a sharp edge. And for this, it's not Illustrator, so you have to do this this way. What I ended up doing was making a new layer, taking my pen tool, Pressing cap locks on my uh, my keyboard. That way I had the, the crosshair, not this little pen tool here. And just have yourself basically connect it here. And you it's kind of tedious, but it makes it just look a lot better. And I'll say right there, you have a sharp edge there now. You do the same thing over here. Sharp edge here. Fill it in. Very simple. So you want to go all the way around or something like this right here, which kind of looks really weird and sloppy. Fill that in as well. Maybe even fill in what's up here. And then fill the path in. Oops, Jesus. Press OK. There we go. And then I think that's pretty OK. That's OK. I think up here is just need a little fixing. So I'm going to quickly just speed this up a little bit just so you guys and you know what I meant, right? So I'm just going to quickly just make a nice little sharp edges because it looks a lot better. It also just makes the, the quality of this entire thing looks 10 times better in my opinion. Okay, so I'm pretty much done. I have one more thing here. Okay, I just saw this one. So it kind of just makes it all look a lot more quality. And this looks 10 times better, in my opinion, with the nice little sharp edges here. And that is gonna how I'm going to have it right here, right? So once I have this here, I can go ahead and just basically merge these two things together now. Now I have this just one nice little stroke with a nice clean cut on the edges. And we're going to call this stroke, just like so. And we're also going to go ahead and put a layer on this. Right click, clip mask it. Take your brush. We're going to take a nice little softness brush here. And we're gonna select this little red here, and we're just gonna simply click just like so, and then select this little yellowish orange here, and then click on the middle just like that. And now I have this little sort of tone on this, which is pretty freaking cool. So what I ended up doing was saying to myself, let's say if we just made another clip mask here, that way if I just, I guess I can race and fill it in if I want to, but I wanted to say if I just did something like this, how cool would it look if I just erase this by just pressing uh, control, uh, or excuse me, alt backspace to quick fill this little black in here, which also will erase on this layer right here. Right, we had something like that, right? And I was like, maybe if I just made this look like it was almost falling off. So quick fill this in black as well. Uh, quick fill this down here black as well. 
maybe even quick fill this entire thing black right here uh, and then maybe even quick fill I don't know we can just cut out I want to make sure you can still see the defined E so I'm not even gonna say too much right there but something like this and if you wanted to even make a little get like spilling maybe quick fill that down there something like that right um, I might just quick fill this down here because I don't know why the heck not right so then if you wanted to you can then put on this G fuel again right lower this opacity down to zero and you can now get this little indention with also the stroke path on it if you want to get rid of the G you of course can but that is basically it I think I'm pretty good to go and I think it looks a lot it looks really cool I can see this already on some people's advertisements just for a little more I guess I guess support on the text itself because sometimes it's all about the product itself which it should be but just making that text just look a little bit cooler making it make sense and stuff like that will honestly probably just boost you up even more and have even more attention brought to it right so I'm going to go ahead and say I'm pretty much done I'm gonna say I am done with this I'm just putting a nice little lighting effect on at the end and we're just gonna stop put, we're gonna stop touching it I'm done with this I think I like this a lot I, I do like this a lot my next G fuel probably concept I'm gonna be doing for like an advertisement like that from portfolio I'm probably gonna do something like this because it's it's very fun and I'm just gonna make sure I tone it just the way I want it and you guys will see my revision of it I guess my final revision but for now that is the tutorial for today hope you guys do enjoy it hope you guys enjoy your Sunday hope you guys enjoy your week including my video here today and stuff like that so if you guys want of course leave a like on the video two likes on the video equals a secret down below as always guys and thank you guys so very much for the support of my past two videos thank you guys so very much on the support on this to the client video you guys make this things very very easy for me honestly I, I, I appreciate you guys very very much so I will talk to you guys in a little bit so HQ out peace